Hello, welcome back to YCFT. We are your hosts, Sam and David, and come join us on our couch while we talk about... Uh, I, can't, I, I, I don't want to talk about this movie. I'll always know what you did last summer. Yeah. Released director DVD in 2006. is the third, and as of the moment, until if the new sequel gets off the ground, final film in the I Know What You Did Last Summer trilogy. The name don't make no sense. The name don't make no sense. Mainly because it's definitely not last summer anymore because the last, <laughs> yeah. the second film being set in 98, mm. this is 2006 now. It definitely isn't last summer. It also has nothing to do with our previous characters. No. It is established that those events happened. Yes. But the title... The title... W- it was supposed to be... It was, I guess it's in the previous video if anyone hasn't watched that. It was supposed to come out in the year 2000 starring Jennifer Love Hewitt Frey Prince Jr. and Brandy. I think a big part of it was that Jennifer didn't want to become typecast as Scream Queen. Mm-hmm. So the project kind of got delayed and eventually rewritten, but it kept the same title. Mm-hmm. The title wouldn't have worked for a third film in then anyway, because it would be several summers away. Yeah. But it definitely doesn't work yet. Even though I do think it's a cool title. Yeah. But again, I'll always know what you did. That summer would have been better. Yeah. It w- Yeah. But I think this film feels more like a reboot than a sequel. Mm. Mm-hmm. And for the most part, the plot does kind of go in the same way as the original. Yeah, it's very similar. Is uh, directed by a guy called what? Silva? Sil- well, Sil- Sylvian White. Let's, Sylvian let's go with that. White. It's how it's spelt. <laughs> Who, from my scene, seems like a lovely guy. It does, has to be said. But yeah. I cannot forgive him for Slender Man. He directed Slender Man. Yeah, I, yeah. Maybe his career didn't take off the way it should have. but Because I think he does do some interesting things. This film is currently sat at 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's not that bad. It's... Uh, yeah. It's... We have... That's cruel. <laughs> we have reviewed worse... We don't often... I think we are, for the most part, not extremely critical of films. Like no. We always find a positive. Yeah. Yeah. This... Jeepers Creepers Reborn is the worst film that we've ever reviewed. Yes. This is not as bad as that film. Not by much, I'm going to say. Uh, Reborn is still officially, I think, the worst I've seen recently. Yeah. It's not a 0% film, but it's not... Not great. (laughs) Good. It is so steeped in 2000, early 2000. Anyone who watched our Salem's Lot 2004 video, you know when I said that feels like an episode of Supernatural? Mm. This feels like an... It has the editing... Two of the cast members went on the star in an episode each of the show as well. Yeah. The editing... Oh, the film's dark. It's really... I, you know when you can tell when you get a Blu-ray set and there's like the later ones that they clearly didn't want to put as much time into remastering? That's how this felt. The editing in the opening sequence actually made me a bit queasy. It did, yeah. The jungle. Like, tsh, 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 tsh. What, there's so many moments where there's cool stuff happening. There's a moment where a character's like swimming and gets like the hook in the heel. And I'm like, oh my God, that's cool. And he's at those. I'm like, oh, will you just hold on a moment for a second? Yeah. Please stop. You're editing moments of your film to death. And it's that was just so mid-2000s. The style as well. I'm still not used to seeing the style again on film. I think we... And it's the worry that when that there will come a point in 10 years' time when films start being set in the early 2000s. Oh, yeah, it's destined time. We, we are doomed to repeat the, the straight side fringe I, you know like that that's inevitable we're gonna see it again the big le- uh, leather bracelets that the men would wear yeah the huge uh, you know like belts that the girls would wear like these huge like, well, take up, like, that and, like much. the extra baggy jeans and like the yeah what, what's another thing like the, the long sleeve t-shirt but with the, the short sleeved over it it's like I think it's that, all was, that was the late 90s as well it's, that yeah. never really went away the synopsis of this film is for the most part the same as the first one the opening well, they're in a, I can't remember where they are, but they're very they're Colorado, landlocked. They're in, they're in Col- Colorado. It's a landlocked place, so not much use of a fisherman. They're at a carnival at the beginning, and they're talking about like the legend of the fisherman and what ha- kind of happened. The urban le- it's, a, it's a legend at this point. Mm. It's that, it does establish that the events of both movies did happen. And this group is attacked by a fisherman. Mm-hmm. And that's, I, I'm not quite sure what happened, because like I said, I kind of got vertigo watching that. 
the way it was edited where he's chasing them through the yeah he chases them through the carnival yeah one of the, one of the the group PJ gets separated he ends up on I don't know some kind of roof. Um, and he's on a skateboard and he's he's trying to get away from the fisherman is said there. fisherman with his hook yeah, his and he starts skating down thinking right he's going to get away and unfortunately he slides right off the, the building yeah but we don't realise this at first because it is revealed that it was all a prank yeah is it Lance? Roger Roger I can't remember any of these characters names because I don't care about them Roger was donning the costume of the fisherman um, Amber was in on it. Colby, Zoe, and of course PJ was. They were yeah. all. They were all in on it. It was all on it, so he could do this big skateboard stunt. Yeah. And then oh, who, someone moved the mask. They kind of realized like he pulls his mask off and he's like, oh, you know how great was that? He's like, look how good this is. This is meant to be the real hook, which might come back into this. Mm-hmm. And kind of realized like, where's PJ? And yeah, he's kind of impaled himself because someone moved. Someone moved. Someone the moved the crash mat. Yeah. So PJ so dead. They obviously have a meeting and they kind of vow that they can't tell anybody about it because PJ it's... was the sheriff's son. Does it sound familiar? Yeah. But this time it was their friend. It was their friend. It was a legitimate accident. accident. It was dumb, but it was all in all, it was just, it was an accident. You know, the, the skateboarding stunt just went horribly, horribly wrong. Yeah. Um, And at first I was like, well, okay, it's... It's arguably not as bad as a hit and run. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like on the scale. Like what they could have just maybe gone to the police and like just admitted it was a prank. It was it went terribly wrong. But then I realized, oh, actually, the guy that's dead is the sheriff's son. Yeah. <laughs> like, Who was? He probably wouldn't be as lenient. Yeah. So yeah, they they make a vow. They are never going to speak of it. They're never going to admit the truth. Burn the costume. Yes. Throw the hook in the lake, and then we cut to a year later. Can you give me a list of the characters? We have. So we we know we have PJ. PJ dead. And Roger, We've got Roger was the prankster. He was the prankster. We have Zoe, who is one of the girls um, involved in, in the What's prank. What's the name of that, that actress? DeVito. Something different. She's probably, I'd say, the most recognisable because she went on to do uh, Pretty Little Lies. Mm-hmm. We have Colby, who is the, the guy that is is sort of like the Ryan Philippi, I guess, of the of the group. He's the one that's like, you know, like the kind of macho guy and is like, we're never going to speak of this. Like, we have to make a vow. We're never going to blah, 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 blah. Um, and we also have Amber, who is our sort of Julie James esque character. She's the one that's like, oh no, you know, we've yeah. got to do something. I think a few of these did go on and do a couple of things and have worked solidly. Yeah. But yeah, so the rest of the film is then that they've re met, you know, yeah, later, the usual thing, like yeah. the, the Julie character. Of, yeah. What was her name again? I've already forgotten. <laughs> Amber. <laughs> Amber. Amber has received the, the, a text message of, I know what you did last summer. Yeah. Yeah. We get like a fake out note up by a bed, but say, oh, we're going off the weekend, hun, no parties. Yeah. So parents are out of town. Oh, the, the soundtrack is very early 2000s as well. Like mm-hmm. grunge. I, I don't hate it. Mm-hmm. But that's just... I, that's the biggest compliment you've paid this film so far. <laughs> I know, but I was like a teenager at this point. That this, that's what I yeah. listened... That's what I listened to. Yeah. And yeah, so they start getting, like the last one, stalked, threatened... And killed off. So they've got the investigation yes. element. One character, well, Roger, he is, obviously, like, like the original one, they're all not at the places they expected to be. No, friendships have dissolved, relationships have dissolved. Um, and it, that, that is another element I I like, actually, you know, to, to give the film some credit. Um, it's done better in the original. I, of course it is. Yeah. Of course it is. But I do like the, the return yeah. of that. When we see Roger on his own, you know, he's, he's, he's the an one alcoholic. That's not coping. He is, I think, because he was the one that donned the costume. Yeah. He blames himself he's like, he's on for the... it. And he's he's retrieved the hook. Yeah. And he's, he's on basically, the cusp of killing himself. He's trying to kill himself. But then it's followed up by the fisherman chasing him and killing him. And it's like. Saving him the job. But like, <laughs> while he's thinking about taking his own life, you know, like, editing around, like, for God's yeah. sake, will you let us have this moment? That might actually make me care about this character. It's the editing distracted me from what is supposed to yeah, be an important I, moment. Yeah. I'm going to keep bringing the editing back because it is such a detraction from the film. Like yeah, the, it is. It, yeah, I can't. But really, also, I can't so all it led to me thinking was right. So we, he was about to take his own life anyway. But now I know there's many big moments, and then he finds the will to live and tries to survive the fisherman. But as 
ultimately not successful. It's like, mm. but I ended up just not caring. I get the kills pretty cool. When there's there's more blood in this because it was the early two thousands and we could get away with it, but it's also the, it's very dark in a lot of scenes. There's two really good kills in it. I'm gonna say. Well, it turned. Yeah, I I agree. I think I can't defend the editing. I, it is it's too choppy. It it is too distracting. It's clearly a stylistic choice. It wasn't the right choice, but it's still a choice. Choices um, were made when making this movie. Yeah, but okay. Cr- some some things I think not necessarily that I like about the movie, but I think some things that you know deserve a little bit of praise. Yeah, I agree. I think most of the kills are done pretty well. I do like some of the build up to the kills. I do actually think there's some like tense ish mm. moments that's that's handled pretty well. And if it wasn't for the really shitty editing, if it well, was just like it's like it's very dark. It's very dark. Yeah, it's like shot on a particular camera. I think wasn't it? Yeah. Like a, yeah, I don't know. But the editing is a distraction. Some of the filmmaking techniques is a distraction. From what overall could have been not a great movie, but some interesting scenes. And like the special effects, the gore is done really well. Something that we, you know, not utilised as as well, maybe even in the original. You know, like remember we spoke about how blood had to be added in afterwards. Whereas in this one, we actually have like pretty cool, like we've got a throat slit with Roger. I think that looks got an really good. That looks really good. We have an impalement that does actually look really, really good. Yeah, there's a scene where uh, Colby is just going for like a midnight swim, as you do, and the fisherman arrives and like hooks him in the in the ankle and like tries to drag him back. That looks really good. Like blood in blood in a swimming pool. It looked it looked really really good. But again, it's you, you know, know those like you see them a lot in films. Those like late night swimming pools that are just open. Yeah. Yeah. Swimming at night. I, I also say I think there's some interesting set pieces. Mm. Um, th- they really in, like the gondola. They love the gondola, see, like the um that yeah. <laughs> there's like there's a whole sequence where she, Amber is going down on a gondola back to like the the main land like the area bit. And <laughs> see the fisherman kind of passing by in another one and mm. jumps onto hers and tries to break into yeah. to her gondola and then bashes. And then he disappears. So with each passing film the fisherman makes less sense. Yeah. And this one it he makes the least amount of sense just because he has no relation to these characters mm. other than they donned him because he's a, an urban legend. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like I need to reveal okay let's well let's go for it because let's my, do it well I think he, he's played by uh don shanks yeah a famous stuntman and i think he's a really good stuntman and he's been in some in some cool stuff he was actually in uh he played you know the the not killer santa in silent Night. oh yeah he did yeah but he also the... played my least favorite michael in halloween 5 so david may or may not be biased i may not be biased yeah <laughs> So, yeah, so uh, Muse, Muse Watson did not return no, he didn't. for this role. The fisherman is revealed to be Ben Willis. Yeah. As a undead zombie. It's the first film in the franchise to bring in a supernatural element. The first thing you wrote down is, why is Ben the killer? Yeah. Because he has, it also means, you know, we said in the first one, kind of the investigation kind of really doesn't have much of an element to it because what they're investigating. No. It doesn't yeah, lead to it. They they come up with some it, suspects. They think it could be the sheriff, you know, out for revenge of his son being killed. And they, you know, they, they try and piece put pieces of the puzzle together. We initially thought it could be PJ back. You know, if yeah, they were, if they, I knew going into it there was a supernatural element. Yeah. So it's like, oh, is he back for revenge? Who moved? It turns out it was just a, it was just an accident. All that investigating and accusing and oh, who's it this? Doesn't fucking matter. No. Because it's a zombie. It's zombie Ben Willis. Who can teleport. <laughs> yeah. Also, I, this annoyed me more than I think it should do. Because the last time we saw Ben Willis, well, I don't think he was dead, but you know, you have to be dead before you become a zombie. But he only had one hand. The hook was grafted. <laughs> this version of Ben has two hands. Two hand Ben. Yeah. It's a, it's um It's an annoyance on my part. <laughs> I wrote I wrote down like how the how the fuck did Ben end up in Colorado? <laughs> Because when you think about it, right? He died in the Bahamas. Well, this is the thing. Like, he's been in North Carolina. He's been to the Bahamas. Now he's in Colorado. This guy, this guy gets about. Ben, yeah. ben is a very well-traveled serial killer at this he point. Is. So we tried to make sense of yeah. how it could be him. And there's a few throwaway lines, and we think it might be the hook. Yes. Because it's kind of, oh, it's, it's the hook from the original killings. 
And he's like, yeah, right. And then later she hits him and says, oh my God, this hurts him. He's like, yeah, if you jabbed me with a fishing hook, it would hurt as well. Oh, well, to be fair, they do try and shoot him, but the bullets don't the Yeah, bullets don't I was just him. thinking, it's like, yeah, of course a fishing hook hurts. A fishing hook will so definitely So it has to be, maybe the fact that the prank that led someone's death used that hook was enough to bring Use his the spirit. original hook. But you've got to piece these things together yourself. It's not, well, like in traditional I know what you did style, it's not very well explained. Um, yeah. And I think to be, to, but to credit means, to he us, has no relation to any of these characters. No. I think... Only one of them kind of works out who he is because they know the legend. I think credit to us, we probably put a bit too more thought into this than anyone else ever really has as to why Ben Willis is, is the killer. Yeah. It, it is... I think I'm going to say, like, on record definitively, it is the hook because I would also like to point out that the working title for this movie was not I'll Always Know What You Did Last Summer. It was called The Hook. So I think... We should be putting a lot more emphasis on the fact that this is like the OG murder weapon yeah. from the first film. But I do appreciate it is totally a throwaway line that's uttered by a character at the very beginning of the movie, a character that passes away very early on in the movie. I think that the script could have done more yeah. the only to, thing that to brings back draw to, emphasis this hurt, to it. This hook hurt him. Okay, so it has to be yeah. the hook in some way. Yeah. But it's like, is he, does he want the hook back? Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, there's no reason for Ben Willis, for, for undead Ben Willis to, to be in Colorado. How did he appear in Colorado? Yeah, but it's, like I said, just me, it makes the whole mystery side of it irrelevant. Yeah. Like, even more irrelevant than previous films. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's just Ben. It's just Ben. And, I, you know, like, I kind of appreciate the fact that the, the fisherman, the hooked killer, is like the hook handed killer, is, is an urban legend. Um, and they, they sort of talk about that at the beginning as well. Um, but otherwise, it's just too it's just too much that Ben Willis. I would say is, I think is in the, is in Colorado. I hate to say it, but I think the TV series is marginally better than this purely because it looks pretty. Oh. The production on it is is very nice. It's they do some interesting things with lights and colors. Well, it doesn't make you feel sick. It doesn't make me feel <laughs> sick to look at win. it. Yeah. It makes me feel sick to listen to it. Yeah. And think about it. Yeah. But this film physically made me ill to watch it. Yeah, it, it's so... It's, it's not a zero percent. And the, I think there is enjoyable elements to it. Some some character traits I do quite like. Even I don't mind the supernatural no. spin on it because they were trying something new. Yeah, I But Ben I Willis had it. no business being the killer in this movie. I can appreciate the supernatural spin. I think it would have made more sense if it was PJ i.e. the victim of their prank. Yeah. You know, it would have made a bit more sense. It wouldn't have made sense why he would then pretend to, to be the fisherman. Unless, it, you know, he's just like honouring the prank that killed him, I, I guess. And yeah. like furthering the urban legend of, of the fisherman killer. But yeah, for it to be Ben Willis and for Ben Willis to come back and be killing characters that has have literally had zero impact yeah. on his existence. Also... He now has the ability work. to teleport, but he is very easily dispatched of. Yeah. He can the, teleport, he goes back into the shadows and can just disappear and say, all right, that's a pretty good upgrade, that. Yeah. The, but then you are defeated so easily. The other thing as well is, I know we're, we're, we really are like bashing the editing here, but like we watch the making of it or like some behind the scenes footage and it's, it's very evident that, first of all, the director did, like he cared about this movie. You know, this wasn't like some little low budget thing that he didn't give a shit for like no he actually you know he, like, yeah, he cared. Cast seemed to have a really good time working on it they did and we saw there's, there's a sequence with colby where he's being chased um through the kitchens of some like you know there's 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 like a talent agent thing that's happening and he's in the kitchens and he's being chased by the fishermen and watching the making of it you know like don shanks obviously he's a very you know like well-established stunt performer stunt coordinator and he's directing this actor as to you know like how to do it and they're doing rehearsals and obviously like it's a stunt so it's very like it's very regimented and they've got to like they've got to hit their marks and watching the making of it was really good it was really interesting um but then when you actually watch the scene in the movie you would not think so much time and effort went into that one shot because again the weird editing like it's shot for shit mm. it's like it's almost destroyed and like again i know we're really 
overselling like how bad the the editing is but it it ruins a lot of shots and like that from that element alone it's not not that it's an unwatchable movie but i think it like it's borderline for you yeah i i can't it is very distracting and like again you know zoe's kill where she's for some reason she's she's she ends up separated from um well we never see how she gets separated from lance and amber i think his name is and yeah, she ends up in like up in like the rafters of of the building again, similar to like Ryan Philippi in the original, um, and she gets hooked up in the gut, and then she's thrown over the the ledge, like over the balcony. It could have been an interesting kill. Could have been interesting. There's one of the few characters I actually quite like. It's too dark for one thing. We I can't tell what's going on, and again, the editing, the editing well, it's like the is edited painful. Out the reason why she separated from the other two. Yeah, I think they did. They they really did. Yeah, Ugh. it's it's not it, this is not 0%. Like I say, like some of the some of the scenes have genuine tension. Some of the acting isn't bad either. You know, some, it's not, it's not some awful. really cool cinematography moments. Yeah, and again, like some set I was a sucker the, for the killer shadow up on a wall. Yeah, absolutely. And like yeah, the gore is done really, really well. It's like Kobe's death is really cool. Yeah, the, there's a good, cool chase sequence. Um, again, I, I have to give it props because it did bring back something that is so crucial to the original, which is, you know, the, the, the destruction of the friendship. Yes, obviously the original did it better, but I can appreciate this one for, for bringing that side of it back because that's missing in I Still Know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, like I'm. this is not, it's not a great movie by any means. It's, it's a bad movie, but there are some things that I think it gets like you know maligned for yeah. that it's a bit undeserved. I know you hate it. <laughs> yeah, I, do. I know you really hate it. I, said, I mean, I'm not if saying a film physically makes yet. me ill to watch. Yeah, then I've got clearly got a problem with the I think, film. I think this, but I can give it props where it deserves them, and I think its biggest downfall is just a product of its type. Yeah, because. We even had, when we talked about Salem's Lot, then we did have some issues with the editing around then. Yeah, and, it's like, and that's 2004. Yeah, and that's 2004. And it's like, I keep comparing everything to Supernatural. I really like Supernatural. I don't want yeah. my movies to look like Supernatural, though. It's, it's a period of directors trying to be edgy. and um, Yeah. To, to it didn't help that it was success. directed DVD, either. No, I don't think it did. Let's be fair. For this, it's never been the most successful slasher franchise. It's not So been. to have a third entry come out eight years after the last installment without your main cast... It, what chance does this film have? I said to you, it's kind of... I know what you did is is sort of similar in a way to Texas Chainsaw, It just in terms of kind of how botched the franchise really is. Something and like that how, was never designed to be a franchise. <laughs> no, exactly. And, like, you know, we've had sequels, we've had reboots, we've, you know, versions with not, you know, ca- unrelated characters, and it's, like, it's totally all over the place. And it really does, like, beg the question of should this have even turned into a franchise? I'm going to say... Sh- Probably not, but because there's elements of the second one I do like. Yeah. Um, it's a bit of bias there, but I just think this film, I do think it was originally meant to be a reboot. Yeah. Like a made for TV reboot of the first one. Mm. And somewhere along the line, they decided to make it a sequel. Yeah. Just because the story is so similar to the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got any more notes on this one? I don't, I just, I'm now trying to think if I had the option, like if, if you had a gun to my head, would I rather rewatch this or the TV show? I would say this. I would, I would rather rewatch this movie. This takes up less time. Yeah, exactly. That, that's it. Purely based on time of my life. <laughs> I would watch this again. Yeah, there you go. I had to push, because we originally weren't going to do it. No, we, we, weren't. we weren't. We weren't. But we, we decided because we got the trilogy, it's like, I was like should we just do it? Well, look, it otherwise, it would have ended up like Slumber Party Massacre 3. We, yeah. have, we said we, did, we might do it one day. We've not even watched it. We have no idea how many views this video is going to get. But you <clears> know what? We can say we've done the I Know What You Did do, trilogy. We never have to watch this movie again. No. Unless we are in, on purposely introducing it to somebody. But you know what? We own it. <laughs> yeah. I'm done with this. I'm done with this franchise uh, now for I'll a bit. I'll always know what it's, you did last summer. Yeah, that is. <laughs> That's us over and out. The I know, the I know franchise. Yeah. Or was it? Was it the the Zach Cherry or second time? Well, he goes the I K W Y D L S. Yes, rolls off the tongue. It really does roll off. The tongue. Is it? Is it like the I know what you did franchise or the last summer franchise? Like, how do you kind of? 
how do you collo- colloquialize it? I don't know. Yeah, it's not easy. You often said that the book would actually be quite an interesting adaptation on its own. I it? I do. I mean, okay. Admittedly, I've not I've not read the book. Um, I was hoping to in time for for the for these string of videos, but from what I can gather of the book, because we're so far departed from it by this point. Yeah, <laughs> as I said, like there's there's never actually been a, tr- a true you know like adaptation of it i mean the original kind of comes the closest the original movie but even if you take then, the slasher was, elements out of it yeah even then it was it was loosely adapted and you know we talked about in in our first video on this that, that the author was steadfastly against turning her book into a horror slasher story and um, but yeah from what i can gather the um the actual book you know the only death is is in the beginning in the hit and run the rest of the story is just devoted to it's like a character study it's you know the the dynamics of the friendships and um characters that are introduced and you know try to like manipulate other characters and you know like destroy willingly destroy the friendships and you know put ridges in between certain characters and i think honestly that there is room for a, an adaptation of that like okay it doesn't have to be horror it doesn't have to be slasher I just think it would be like an interesting teen yeah, drama. It's, maybe it's a case of why not at this point. If this is if if this is where we're at, yeah. And if the two TV series is where we're at, yeah. And I look I look forward to reading the book because when it eventually arrives, I, I you know I'm gonna I'm yeah. gonna read it. If it pops up on a stream service for free, and you're curious enough, or if you want a bad movie night, maybe watch it. Or if, like us, if you've spent money on. Because I think it was it was actually cheaper just to get the whole trilogy, wasn't it? Just to get the two separate, like the yeah. first two separately. If you uh, if you've done that, it's like, well, I own it. I might as well watch it. But do not on purpose you go and seek this out. No, I, I think I, it's not worth your time. We've spoken quite a lot in, in on the channel about you know like how a lot of films their one of their core values is the fact that they are like a, a trip back in time, um, and I I'll always know what you did last summer is. Ooh, it's a it's a throwback to 2006. Yeah, but it's so dark you can't really see it. Yeah. Thanks for stopping by, guys. We're, this is the end of our summer slasher season now. Yeah, we're going to have a drink. We're going to have a drink and we'll probably get into some more supernatural-based stuff. It's spooky season. Up. We're going to go, start going into spooky season now. So, thanks a lot. And we'll see you next week. Bye.